Hi guys, welcome to my May reading wrap up. Today I am super excited to talk about all the books that I read last month with you guys. I read eight books total in May. Five of those I read physically and three of them I listened to on audiobook. As far as the genre breakdown goes, I read two romances, two thrillers, two literary fictions, one historical fiction and one fantasy. Normally the way I film my wrap ups is I start with my lowest rated and least favorite book and then work my way up to talking about my favorite and highest rated book of the month. But sadly in May, I did not have any five star reads. So since I don't have like a grand finale to work up to, I figured I would just go in chronological order and share the books with you guys in the order that I read them. I watch other booktubers who film their wrap ups like this and I actually really like it. So tell me which way you guys prefer. So the first books that I read in May were Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover and Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. I read both of these for a reading vlog that I filmed. At the time that I'm filming this wrap up, I have not yet even looked at the footage from that reading vlog. I haven't sat down to start editing it and obviously haven't posted it yet. Ideally, I would like to post that reading vlog before my wrap up goes up. So if I do get to it before posting my wrap up, I will obviously link it below in the description and put it above in the cards. But if I don't get to it before posting this wrap up, up definitely stay on the lookout for that to hear more about my thoughts on both of these so first I read reminders of him by Colleen Hoover this is her newest release that came out earlier this year and I haven't read too much Coho but everything that I have read by her so far I have really loved this one to me wasn't quite on the same level so I ended up giving this one four stars reminders of him follows our main character named Kenna she just got out of prison and her main goal now is to reconnect with her daughter who she really hasn't met because she's very young and she gave birth to her when she was in prison so now that she's out she's trying to find her and she ends up meeting this guy named Ledger and Ledger has a connection to both Kenna and the people taking care of Kenna's daughter so he's kind of acting as like the buffer between the two of them it's definitely a small town setting everyone knows everyone kind of vibe so no one really likes Kenna no one is rooting for her in this town because of the reason she went to prison everyone finds what she did to be very unforgivable so no one wants her to reconnect with her daughter while this is a romance I would definitely say it's very heavy and it's not like a rom-com the main thing for me in this book is I really don't like reading about children I find them annoying in real life Life. so when I'm trying to read to escape real life I don't want to read about them in my fiction and Kenna's story was one that I just couldn't really relate to and all the coho books that I've read so far even though I've loved them and given them five stars there's always been a little something missing and I couldn't put my finger on what it was until I watched Noel Gallagher's May wrap-up where she was talking about how she read Ugly Love and she said that coho's books are very plot driven so she doesn't really write characters that you form an emotional attachment to obviously like that was her opinion but I completely agree with it and I can't believe I didn't put my finger on that before because I love a character driven book and her books are so plot heavy that I don't really connect to her characters but because the plot is so well done and she writes it so beautifully I still love her books but this one for me the story I just couldn't get into it as much also the love interest in it I really wish that she would have kept the relationship platonic and I wasn't rooting for them to be together because it just didn't feel right overall the story was beautiful the ending did really make me cry but I felt like it was a bit predictable but still overall did enjoy my reading experience. It just wasn't one that I deeply connected with. Next for that same reading vlog, I read Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. I found this book because after I read Normal People and fell in love with it, I started Googling books that are like normal people. And this book was on several lists that I found. And based on the description, it sounded very Sally Rooney-esque. Nisha Dolan is an Irish author. So I thought I would really like this one. I gave this one four 
four stars as well, but I definitely think this was more up my alley. Exciting Times follows our main character, Ava. She is a young Irish woman from Dublin who moves to Hong Kong to teach English. Once she gets there, she ends up forming a relationship with this guy named Julian, and that is like the first third of the book is her relationship with Julian. And I hated that part of the book so much just because their relationship, if you can even call it that, because they were very adamant that there were no labels to what they had going on. It was just so toxic and it brought out the worst in both the characters. So it was just making it really unbearable to read. It made the main character like almost insufferable. So I really almost DNF'd this book. But then we meet our other character, Edith, who Ava forms a relationship with. Edith really turned this book around for me. I loved her as a character and her relationship with Ava was way less toxic. And then the last third of the book is this love triangle situationship. And it was really interesting to read about. This book is definitely very character driven, which is more my thing. It was more like about the mundane, basic details of life. And if you don't really like Sally Rooney kind of books or character driven books, I don't think this one will be for you, but I personally really enjoyed it. The writing is really, really smart. At times, I felt like some of the things written could be kind of pretentious, and I honestly felt like a lot of it went over my head and I felt kind of dumb. I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what this means, but it was a really well-written book. I'm really excited because they are adapting this into a series. HBO picked this up and the actress who is going to play the main character Ava is actually Phoebe from Bridgerton. So that is very exciting news for exciting times and I think reason enough to pick this one up. The next book I read is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I did get this one from the library, but literally the day after I checked it out, the audiobook became available on Libby. So I ended up just solely listening to this one on audiobook. This is a YA fantasy and this book wasn't even on my radar until last month. I literally watched three videos back to back where people were recommending this book and saying that even if you don't like fantasy, which I don't, you'll like this book. And I also saw two videos recommending it for spring, which after reading it, I don't really understand that recommendation because it didn't really give me spring vibes. I guess because it takes place in a fairy world, that's what was giving them spring, but I didn't find it to be super springy. So I ended up giving this one three stars. I found it to be very mediocre and I really don't get the hype with this one. So this story is told from the perspective of our main character, Jude. She is a twin and her twin's name is Taryn. They also have an older sister named Vivian. So in the prologue, you find out that this guy named Maddox, who is a fairy, comes and ends up killing their parents. They find out that Maddox is actually Vivian's biological father, which means Vivian is half fairy. Their mother fell in love with a mortal man and then escaped to the mortal world with Vivian, ended up having the twins, so the twins are mortal. Maddox was super pissed that their mom, who he was in love with, broke all the promises she made and escaped the fairy world, so he takes them all back with him to live in the fairy world and it's just about their life once they get there. Jude is more into like the fighting side of the fairy world. She wants to be a knight. Taryn is more into finding someone to fall in love with. So the main thing for me with this book is I did not find it to be descriptive enough. Like I had no image in my head the entire time I was reading of what Jude looked like, what any of the characters looked like, what the fairy world looked like. I felt like there was very little description of anything. Also because they're mortals, they would sometimes like escape back to the mortal world to get things they needed from like the mall. There's one point where they literally go to Target to get tampons. And I just found the juxtaposition of them going from like this magical, fantastical fairy world to Target and the mall to be very jarring. I just thought it was super weird and it took me out of the story, but it was kind of funny, I'm not gonna lie, it made me laugh. And I really didn't mind Jude at all as a narrator and our main character. I feel like she was not like other girls, but she wasn't trying to be not like other girls. She wasn't annoying in the least bit and I did enjoy reading from her perspective, but overall I just didn't really form an attachment to anyone or anything in this book and I didn't really care. I just found it to be very average. The next book I listened to on audiobook is Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. 
I love Peter Swanson's writing. Everything I've read from him so far has been almost a five star read. I read The Kind Worth Killing earlier this year and it's probably going to make it to my favorites of 2022 list because I think about that book almost every day. I loved it so so much so I really want to read his entire backlist. So when I saw this one was available on Libby, I immediately put a hold in for it and started listening to it. And sadly, this one was my first miss from Peter Swanson. I gave this book two stars. So Every Value Break is about our main character named Abigail. She ends up meeting this guy named Bruce who has a lot of money. They get engaged and when it comes time for her bachelorette party, he pays for the whole thing. After all the other girls at the bachelorette party have gone to bed, Abigail ends up hitting it off with this stranger and they just stay up into the late hours of the night talking and they end up hooking up and having a one night stand and Abigail feels so bad about it. She feels conflicted on whether or not she should tell Bruce, but she decides to just keep it to herself, keep it a secret because she's like, this was my bachelorette party. It was my last fling. You know, I'm not gonna do this once Bruce and I get married. So she just sweeps it under the rug, puts it behind her and decides to move forward. They're on their honeymoon and when they're there, she ends up seeing this guy that she had a one night stand with. He's there at their honeymoon destination and she's like, what the hell is this like a stalker situation? This guy thinks that we have something and that I'm gonna leave my husband for him. What is going on? So I was really intrigued by the premise. I didn't know what was gonna happen. As the book progresses, it becomes very clear and very obvious what is going on. Even before the twist is revealed, I found it to be super underwhelming and I saw a Goodreads review that said this book is trying to be feminist but is actually really misogynistic and I could not agree more. I feel like that sums up everything that I feel about this book. I don't know, I wouldn't recommend it. I really didn't enjoy it. Sadly, it was my first miss from Peter Swanson. Next, I finally read Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I put this one off for forever because of how much I loved normal people. I was scared this one would let me down, but this one was actually my favorite book of the month. I gave this one 4.25 stars, so definitely didn't like it as much as normal people, but I still really loved it, and it's safe to say that I am a Sally Rooney stan. I would pay to read her grocery list, her to-do list, anything she writes. I just love her writing style. She somehow can make the most mundane, boring basic things sound so cool and exciting i don't know how she does it but i just love her so much so conversations with friends has kind of four main characters so there's francis and bobby they previously had a romantic relationship but presently they are just friends they are both spoken word poets and they end up becoming entangled with this married couple who are about 10 years older than them named Melissa and Nick and it is just about how their lives become meshed with one another, the relationships that ensue. So I think for me this book I found it to be a little bit bland and a little bit vanilla, especially the characters. I was comparing it to normal people and trying to figure out what it was in normal people that I loved so much that wasn't in this book and I think in normal people because we only have two main characters and it's told in third person, we get so much more emotion out of it because we know what each of them are feeling and thinking. And in this book we have four major characters and we're only getting one perspective. It's told in first person from Francis's point of view. And Francis is a very stoic character so we're not getting much emotion and feeling out of her. And it's kind of hard to know what everyone else is thinking because we're only seeing her side to the story. I think maybe if we got at least one more perspective, like Bobby's point of view, it would have really upped the story for me. And I just wanted more emotion and feeling out of everyone. But I still really enjoyed this book. I found myself getting so swept up into the story. Whenever I put it down, I would be constantly thinking about it in my real life and like the lines between what was happening in my life and in the story were kind of blurring. I was just thinking about it all the time and I really liked it, but I just found it to be slightly bland. Next, I finally read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I gave this book four stars. 
So this is about fictional rock and roll band, The Six. And then there is this solo act singer, Daisy Jones. It is about how they come together and form one collaborative act and eventually become one band. And basically to sum this book up in three words, it is about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. There are a lot of heavy topics in this book. So if you are sensitive to anything, definitely make sure you check the trigger warnings on this one because I was shocked at how heavy some of the subject matter was. Taylor Jenkins Reid is literally a genius. Like I don't know how she comes up with these incredible fictional worlds and characters. And I don't hear anyone talk about this enough, but this woman, literally wrote a fictional album in the back of the book like there are about 10 songs back here i'm like she literally wrote a book and an album i just i can't even wrap my mind around that that's just pure talent i think the thing for me this is my second taylor jenkins read book i gave evelyn hugo four and a half stars this was a four star book for me her worlds that she creates and her characters that she creates although they are incredible they feel very fictional to me so it's hard for me to get swept up in the story or get emotionally attached to the characters like this book was almost a little bit forgettable for me when i would put it down i wasn't really thinking about it again but when i did pick it up i was enjoying my time reading it i've heard that the audiobook to this is incredible it has a full cast and this book if you're not familiar with the format of it it is told in interview style so maybe i would have enjoyed it a little more if i had consumed it that way and maybe i'll listen to the audiobook one day in the future but I still really enjoyed my time reading this. Also, the ending was so well done. I thought it was beautiful. It was sad, but I loved it. The next book I read in May is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I wasn't even intending to read this book in May, but I know it's so many people's favorite book. So I was hoping to love it too. I did really, really like it a lot. I ended up giving it four stars, but I had a couple issues with it, which we'll get into. So Love in Other Words is about our main characters, Macy and Elliot. It's told in a style that I absolutely love. It alternates chapters, one in the past and then one in the present. So we're seeing Macy and Elliot as they are childhood friends and they end up growing into lovers. And then in the present, you learn that 11 years have passed and something happened where they stopped talking and they meet each other in present day and they're trying to reform their connection and move past what has happened. And then it's also leading up to the night where some big thing happened that caused them not to talk anymore and that is revealed towards the end of the book. So I flew through this book. It is a little over 400 pages and I read it in less than 24 hours. I just love a book that alternates from past to present. That is 1000% my vibe. I thought it was so sweet. I loved reading about Macy and Elliot in the past but then as they got older there were like a few chapters right past the 200 page mark where i felt like macy and elliot were starting to do and say things that were kind of out of character for them and it kind of put me off i was like oh this feels like a completely different book and completely different characters what's going on and it really took me out of the story and then the next few chapters it would kind of like go back to how things were so i was like hmm that's kind of weird but okay I wish I could just like take out those chapters because other than that, I was loving it. And then we get to this big reveal, why Macy and Elliot haven't talked in 11 years. And I felt like it was kind of ambiguous what actually happened. And when I'm reading reviews, I found that like 50% of people think that one thing happened and then the other 50% of people think another thing happened. I don't know, I didn't like it because I personally think that the authors wrote it for you to think that thing A happened and I think that thing B happened and for thing B to have happened I feel like they should have gone into more detail and it just ended kind of too abruptly for me. I don't know. So I took off half a star for the reveal and then I took off half a star for the chapters in the middle where they said and did things that felt out of character but other than that, I wish those things wouldn't have happened because I was really, really loving this book, but 
it was still good. I would recommend it. And the last book I read in May, I listened to this one on audiobook. I was just going through Libby and trying to find stuff that was available that was on my TBR, even if I wasn't like dying to read it. And I came across The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris. And that book has been on my TBR for a while. So I decided to listen to it. And I ended up giving this book three stars. So this book is marketed as a thriller that's supposed to be kind of like Get Out. And I really think this book is mismarketed, but we'll get into that. So the other black girl follows our main character, Nella. She is a young black woman working in a publishing house called Wagner. And she is basically an assistant to an editor. And her office that she works in is mostly all white people. So Nella really tries to promote diversity in the workplace, but it kind of just goes in one ear and out the other of her white coworkers until one day she sees that a young black woman is being interviewed for another assistant position and she gets excited and this other black girl ends up getting hired. So she is glad to have another black girl in the office who she hopes to be friends with. And this other black girl's name is Hazel. So her and Hazel do end up hitting it off. They form a friendship. And then some sus things start happening. She gets a note on her desk telling her to leave Wagner. And she starts to question who is behind the notes, why someone wants her to leave. And she starts to question if Hazel really is someone she can trust. So I ended up giving this book three stars. Like I said, I feel like this book is really mismarketed. It's marketed as a thriller and this book to me was not thrilling at all. It moved at a glacial pace. It was so, so slow. Literally nothing happens until like the last 50 pages. But because of that, I did really get a good grasp on the characters and I feel like I really got to know and understand Hazel and Nella and understand their dynamic and I really enjoyed learning about them and getting to know their characters but it just overall moved really really slow I was never on the edge of my seat or like dying to know what was gonna happen I feel like the suspense wasn't really building up also there was this whole entire subplot that was going on in the background between these characters from like 20 years ago and I don't know, it was kind of enhancing the story, but then their storyline ended up going nowhere. I thought it was all going to tie together and like line up with the present day plot line and it just, it went nowhere. So I was like, did I miss the point? What was the point of that? Why were these characters even in the story at all? I just didn't get it. Also the big reveal or twist at the end, I feel like you can see it coming about 40 pages before it even happens. So it wasn't really shocking when it was finally revealed. And then I feel like the aftermath after the twist kind of negated the point that the author was trying to make with the story. So maybe some stuff went over my head, but I don't know. Overall, I gave it three stars because I did like learning about the characters and I thought it was overall a cool concept, but if you're looking for a thrilling, suspenseful read, it wouldn't be this one. All right, guys, those were all the books that I read in the month of May. I hope you enjoyed watching my reading wrap up. If you did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. I hope you will stick around by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you guys here on my channel. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you're adding any of them to your TBR. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments. Thank you again so, so much for watching and I'll see you guys so soon in my next video. Bye guys.